An extremely useful exercise is to make two numbers and add them and make sure that the result is the same in all the bases that we have studied thus far. And you can make those two numbers in any of the bases, but then you have to convert them to the other bases, and then you have to add them, and so on and so forth. So that's the exercise we're going to do here. Uh, the bases we have learned about thus far is hexadecimal, binary, and decimal. And I'm going to separate these using that little right-click trick, making a straight lines as, as straight a lines as possible. Maybe those aren't perfectly straight. So we need a hex number. Let's do four. And again, we could start out with it in any base. I'm just going to start out in hex. Let's do four. Um, A, and let's do 3D, and I'm going to add these, but before I add them, I want to make their binary equivalent and their decimal equivalent, and I'm going to also add the binary values, the decimal numbers, and I should get the same result across the board, just in a different base. So, we saw in previous video how to convert a hex to binary a 4 in binary, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then A, well in decimal that's a 10, but an A in binary that's going to be an 8 plus a 2 would make a 10. So I need to extend this a little bit. Okay, 3D, well in binary that's 0, 0. We need a 1, 1 there, so a 2 and a 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then D, oh, now i got to think. A... B, C, D, and again, I encourage you to memorize this. I'm going to go all the way out here. F, so A in decimal, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So D is 13, but now 13 decimal, it's 13 decimal, uh, but how do I get the binary equivalent? Well, I know I'm going to need a 1, so that's going to be our odd number. And then 13 minus 1 is 12. Well, how do I make a 12? Well, that's going to be a, a 8 and a 4, but then not another 2. So 8 plus 4 plus 1 makes a 13 decimal, but then hex, that's D. So there's the binary equivalent. Look how nice and cleanly that went. Now, decimal doesn't... It's not a power of 2. It's 10, which isn't a power of 2, so it doesn't neatly fall into any of these groups. So we have to use the longhand conversion technique that I showed you. So an A, well an A is 10, and then 4, well remember this this digit right here, let me do it in a different color here, this this is 16 to the 0, which is, so A times 1 is 10, and then this is 16 to the 1, so it's 4 times 16, well what is 4 times 16, 4 times 6, 24, carry 2, 4 times 1 is 4, 5, 6, 64, now, I should have recognized that, right? 4 times 16, that's a, another power of 2. So, 64. Alright. So, 64 plus 10 makes a 74. So, our first decimal value is 74. Alright, and then our second decimal value, well, instead of using the hex values to decimal, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And instead of converting our hexadecimal to decimal, I'm just going to take our converted binary, hoping we did this right, and convert that to decimal. And why? Because I think it's good exercise, both for me and for you, a good mental exercise. Let's go thin here. So this is 2 to the 0. This is 2 to the 1. But actually, let's just write out the actual decimal values. So this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Two barely, uh, 64, uh, 128, but these are zeros, so we don't need them. So this is going to be a 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4, no twos, but we do have a 1. So what's that going to be? 6 plus 4 is 10, 8 plus 2 is 10, so that's 21. Carry the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 61. That is a 6, I promise. So Let's go back to blue, and we're going to have 61 here. All right, so this is the fun part, I think. We're just going to add all these values in their respective bases. Let me get rid of this here. 
And if my calculations are correct, we should get the same result all the way down. So let's do just that. Excuse me while I adjust my mouse here. My hand's getting a little tired. Okay, 4 plus 1 is 5. No carry. 7 plus 6 will be 13. So 135. Did you see that? How I naturally just dropped that 1 there? I mean, to be technically correct, showing you all that I've done. 7 plus 6 is 13. Carry the 1, but then 1 plus nothing is 135. Okay. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1, 0, carry the 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 1, 1 plus nothing's 1. Whew! I was afraid we'd have overflow there. I just made these numbers up as we were going along here. Now, D plus A, if, uh... If you were raised in base 16, this would just naturally roll out of your head like the base 10. But again, it probably doesn't. So let's let's go through the through the exercise here. Of you can convert to decimal and then convert back to hex. That's one way of doing it. Or we, let's do the uh, number line trick that I showed you in a previous video. Let me just erase this and uh, this out of the way. We can erase this. Give us some room down here. I think we're good. Okay, let's do the hexadecimal number line. That's let's give us some room here. This will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then we'll roll over again. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, and again we could just keep going on and on forever right off the edge of your screen, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So right now we're at an A. So let's position ourselves at an A. And we need to move forward D. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, my gosh, I just say 10. A, B, C, D. And we need to move forward D. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D. Puts us right here at 7. But here we go. We've just rolled over here, this 0 through F. Well, how do we represent that? That's a, that's a normal carry, right? So it's going to be 1, 7 is our resulting hexadecimal value, adding A and D. So we put the 7 here. We carry the 1, and this 1 here, since we're one digit over, represents 0 through F here, or the bump, as I've been calling it in previous videos. All right, 4 plus 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8, so our answer here is 8, 7. Now we can quickly identify between hex and binary. This binary value is an 8, right? This is 2 to the 3, so that's 8. 8, that's nice. And then look at that. These are interesting numbers because... This number minus 1 basically means all these bits are turned on and this bit's turned off. It's the inverse of this. It's inverted, so to say. And so so this is a 7. This is 4 plus 2 plus 1 makes a 7. Anyway, you can see if I added 1 to this. Let me just do that here. I'm going to take this 0, 1, 1, 1, and I add 1 to that. Well, that's 1 plus 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, then that's 1, 0, 0, 0, which is the same thing here. I didn't plan that. That just kind of worked out that way, and that's kind of nice. Anyway, 8, 7. This is the binary equivalent. Now, is 8, 7 in hex equal 135 uh, decimal? Or we could do the binary to decimal conversion. doesn't matter. We've already seen that these two numbers are equal. I'm going to go hex, hex number to the decimal number, or the base 16 number to the base 10 number. Some because it's easier. That's, again, why we use hex, is we're abstracting away. I don't want to calculate this many bits. I can calculate just two numbers. So I think we're uh, are we done with this. I hope we're done with this. Let me just erase this off the screen. Grab my pencil. So this is going to be 7, because that's 16 to the 0. 16 to the 0. So that'll be 7. And then 8, this is the 16 to the 1, all right? So basically, our resulting value is going to be 8 times 16. So, so eight, eight, this is 48. 
8 times 1 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so 128, 128 plus the 7 times 1 is a 7, and 128 plus 7, well, we're going to have a carry again, right? This is going to be 15, and then 2 plus 1 is 3, 135, and yes, that is equal to our decimal value there. So we, we basically made two numbers, and we represented those numbers in all three bases, added them together, and we got the, the correct result in all cases. Now, another step I like to do is just verify that with a calculator. Notice I'm going to pull out my calculator very last, though, and not cheat, cheat, and pull it out at the first. So let me pull up the calculator over here. And we're, what are we right now? We're at decimal, and we can already see the binary value. So let's just pump the decimal number in. Uh, not 135. I was going to start with the result. I, won't, I don't want to start with the result. I want to start with the, the input. So 74, I can see 74. Uh, yes, that's this. Let me get the red here. This number here is identical to our first input here, our first binary input. And then if I click on hex here, I'll see the hex value, which is 4a, which is equal to that. So all of our first inputs are correct. Let's look at the the next one. I'm going to go back to our decimal representation. Plus 61. 61. And again, just comparing the binary result here. Here's the binary value comparing with this one. Well, that's 1101, 1101. Good. 0011011. Great. And then let's let's look at the hex. Click on hex. 3D. Good job. Then I hit equals and I get 87 or the binary value uh, right here, 1000, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and if I click on decimal, I should see 135, decimal 135, ah, feeling good. So, good exercise, uh, do more than just two hexadecimal digits, do three and four, if you can do up to four, you should probably feel good that you can do up to a billion, uh, and just do a few of these exercises, good for your heart and lungs and head.